Hello YouTube. Well, it has absolutely been too long since I've given you a good update. So here we are with the PE6502 computer. Um, I'm going to work on a better case uh, for this machine now. This uh, folded over sheet of paper <laughs> uh, style um, case is not really cutting it for this thing. But you can see I'm hooked up power uh, RCA uh, composite monitor and PS2 keyboard. There's my little uh, tiny um, color monitor, which is uh, also not very uh, fashionably propped up on a cardboard box. Um, let's see, also, uh, I've got the serial harness, which comes with the kit. To that little uh, yellow doodad there, that is a gender changer that does not come with the kit, but fortunately you can get two for a dollar on Amazon if I remember correctly. The serial to USB interface uh, from US Converters, um, a little bit more pricey than the cheapest thing you can get on eBay, but well, well worth it, especially if you're playing with retro computers. This thing is fantastic. And that's connected to my uh, little computer I've got going on there, um, USB of course. Uh, here's my PS2 keyboard, here is my keyboard for my computer, and I've got my computer, and I'm sorry about the, uh, the glare there from the windows, but that is a TerraTerm window, and I'll quickly show you if I can manage to do this without shaking the camera too much. If we go to setup and we look at terminal, um, and these uh, settings are in the manual, but I wanted to show you one quick correction there. Notice uh, the uh, receive has got control plus line feed, and the transmit is just um, carriage return. Sorry, the, the transmit carriage return and line feed, yeah. Uh, the manual says to do that, uh, so that's all fine and dandy, but when we switch this uh, and we look in the serial setup here, uh, the only difference here, it's still whatever COM port your uh, serial interface puts you on, uh, still 115, 200, 8 bit, none, uh, 1 bit hardware, that's all the same, but I've recently figured out, like, hey, why am I putting a small delay in here? Uh, we've got hardware handshaking. What the heck? So uh, somebody pointed out to me, like, hey, I was watching one of your videos, and your file transfer seems slow. Why is that? And so uh, I think this is why. So let's do this. Let's uh, come on over here, and I will turn on the power switch, uh, which is... Uh, connected to my wall warp power adapter. So when I flip this switch, uh, PE6502 has booted here, serial is connected, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna load uh, Jeff Tranter from uh, YouTube, and he's got a really awesome blog. We're gonna load his farmhouse adventure here. Uh, I need to get myself a little bit better of a filming set up here, but I'll just say send file. We're in downloads already. And this is Jeff Trainer's farmhouse adventure. Okay. So if you look, look how much faster that's going, you know? That's with a zero millisecond delay in there. The code is just jamming onto this uh, little computer. It's a pretty big program. So while that's going, I'll tell you, little history of this farmhouse adventure. I mean, for me, these retro computers, there's nothing more fun than playing uh, old school text adventure games like Zork, um, like Zork's precursor and closely related uh, older cousin, uh, Dungeon. Dungeon was made by some friends at MIT and it ran on a mainframe and it was so popular that they later split it into three pieces and those three pieces were just small enough to run on the 8-bit computers that were becoming available in the day like a TRS-80 or a Atari 800 or Apple II. Uh, here it is, it's loaded. And, and just real quick, 
Dungeon itself was inspired by a game called Adventure, which is um, written by, gosh, William Crowther and Don Woods, I believe, in the late 70s. And it actually um, started out as just a simulator of an actual cavern uh, that uh, William Crowther would explore. And then Don Woods kind of turned it into a game with, uh, you know, a thief and, and jewels and things. Anyways, so fast forward a little bit, and Jeff Trainer is like an awesome YouTuber guy. You guys, I'll put a link in the description here, but um, he is an excellent coder, and he likes to assemble electronics kits, and he likes to um, review uh, retro computers and uh, things like that on his YouTube channel. He wrote this in uh, C, I believe C++. And compiled it for a 6502 uh, cross assembler and then um, he made his source code available now of course Jeff uh, I believe he first coded this for another machine I could be mistaken he may have ported it to uh, an 8080 uh, he's a big fan of replica one and Altair micro from Briel computers I'm a huge fan of Briel computers those guys um, rock and I hope they start selling some kits again. Um, anyways, the Replica 1 is an Apple One Direct uh, clone. It's very close to uh, this machine. I mean, you know, this machine being very close to an Apple One runs uh, Steve Wozniak's Wasmon and Integer Basic. Anyways, boy, am I rambling here. Um, long story short, Jeff wrote this and made the source code available. I compiled it in Linux with um, the libraries uh, for the 65CO2 cross-assembler uh, added. I link, I, I discussed this on the forum and provide a link for uh, if you want to build a, uh, a tool chain to assemble code like this as well. And then I discuss uh, Jeff Trainer's uh, adventure here, but um, the thing is, is I realized not everyone has access to a Linux computer, and so I made the uh, the compiled code, which you just saw me load from my source, my host computer into the PE sixty five zero two. I made that available, and you can download it. And actually, I downloaded it from my forum onto this computer and just loaded it into the PE sixty five zero two. All right. So, a little bit of camera shake here as I grab my keyboard and enough jabbering from me. Uh, if you've never seen a text adventure, uh, here's how it goes. You're, um, you're basically the, uh, the brains of the operation and the text is provided by someone who you're commanding what to do. And you can type commands like, uh, I believe it's inventory, to see what they're carrying. Okay, right now this person's carrying a flashlight. Uh, we tell them to look. Okay, he's in a driveway, you can go north. So we'll tell him go, I don't know if you have to type north. Uh, you were in the driveway, look. Uh, okay, we're, we're still in the driveway, but now we can see a bottle. Take bottle. Okay, and then inventory. You can see you're collecting items here. Also notice from the description, um, and I apologize for all this camera shake, uh, we've got some additional directions we can go north, south, east, or west. Let's continue to go north. And in fact, let's see if we can abbreviate, just hit an N. Yep, you're in front of the barn. So tell them, give us a little bit more detail. I see nothing special. I'm gonna continue to go north. I'm in the workroom of the barn, look. Uh, I see a lamp, not needing that, but I'll go up. I'm in a hayloft. I see a pitchfork. I uh, maybe I need that. Take pitchfork, right? Okay, see nothing special. We can go down. Okay, I'm gonna go out of this workroom. I'm in front of the barn, I gotta go south here. I'm back in the driveway. Uh, let's try east. You're in front of the garage. It will be getting dark soon. You need some sort of light or you won't be able to see. Gosh. 
Well, I have the flashlight, right? Um, okay, I'm in front of the garage, so let's go east again. I'm in the garage. I can see oil. We don't need that. West. Uh, how do we get into the house? West. You're in the driveway. West. Door to the house. West again. I'm in the kitchen. I see a candy bar. Okay, so, and the gist of this game is that your uh, young grandson or kid or whatever has like taken off and um, sort of wandered off at the family farm and a farm is a dangerous place and so you have to find them before it gets too dark. Anyways, uh, I think this is really cool. This is just yet one more um, program that's available that you can run on this PE6502. Um, and also a faster way to load um, programs into the PE6502 than what I've showed uh, before. And uh, this video is getting a little bit long in the tooth, so I'll just sign off here. But what I'll quickly add is that um, we're shipping kits out every week. Um, if you want to get your kit, um, email us and, uh, and let us know. We'll work with you. We figured out a way to ship international now. Now, I don't know for sure what the PE6502's display will look like on PAL. I, I hear it should work, um, but not display colors. Your mileage may vary. Of course, the serial port's always gonna work. And if somebody has one and they can test it with PAL, let me know how it's going. Um, other than that, we're really gonna start aggressively working on add-ons for this thing within the next month. So you can expect to see a backplane um, in which case you'll be able to plug the already commercially available CFF A1 compact flash uh, drive into this unit, which will work with uh, the AppleSoft uh, that's built into the ROM already. Um, you can expect to be able to plug a sound card with a SID or a Swin SID Nano replica SID chip plugged into it, um, which should be able to be programmed at the exact same location and methods as a Commodore 64, which just addresses the uh, SID chip um, by poking values to its memory location, which will be the same on this board. Uh, I'm kind of toying with the idea of a robot controller that you can plug the PE6502 into and program it in basic, but have it be able to read sensors and drive motors. That seems like that would be a lot of fun. And, um, you know, there's a, there's a few other things, like perhaps an LCD screen interface with uh, some more tack switch buttons so you could have a menu-driven application. Um, I don't know. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, stop by our forums or just shoot us an email. And uh, thanks for watching. Okay, bye.